Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a mini tutorial video that I wanted to make. Um, we're here looking at my messy desk and this is the top frame for Delta Flyer. And I wanted to do a tutorial video on how I do heat set inserts, uh, how I install them. I did this like a year ago or something when I was building a Rook, but that's buried into like a Rook uh, playlist and it's like in the middle of the video and stuff like that. So a lot of people may not see it, but I wanted to make a video might help some people out on doing heat sets. It's not a scary thing. They're very, very easy to do. You do not need any special tools whatsoever. You can use the cheapest garbage soldering iron that you have and you can always get flush, nice, clean heat sets doing using my method. So first things first, with all my designs, I try to use a standard heat set size. By standard, I meaning most common. Uh, I believe this is the Voron kind of standard for heat sets. So generally I will buy these M3 um, five millimeter in diameter and four millimeter in length. I buy them from Hot XYZ on AliExpress. I always buy 300 at a time because, you know, 100 sounds like a lot, but you will burn through those really fast, especially if you're building printers and mods and other things that you might find. It's always good to have heat sets on hand. So uh, my first tip is buy more than you think. 300 of these is like 11 bucks, I think, or something like that. So just buy a bunch of extras and then that way um, this won't hold you up when you're doing all sorts of printer builds and stuff like that. But all my designs for M3, I try to use these uh, five by four um, heat sets. So what I like to do is I use this janky old uh, Amazon <laughs> soldering iron that um, almost lit my house on fire, but I repaired it, uh, kind of. We're not going to talk too much about that. But as you can see, this is just a garbage uh, soldering iron with whatever tip came with it. The tip doesn't really matter too much. Um, we're not relying on the soldering iron to put the heat set in straight, essentially. We're going to be doing that at the end of the, the step. So you do not need, you know, soldering or a heat set insert tips or anything like that. If that's your cup of tea, definitely go that route. That's totally fine. I just like simplicity. I don't wanna to have to add an attachment onto this and all that kind of stuff. So what I will do is, um, and by the way, I usually set my uh, soldering iron to 450. That's just the temperature I run. I know people do 250, 350, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, um, set your soldering iron to that temperature. It is definitely good to have a soldering iron that has an adjustable uh, temperature but like I say this was like 20 bucks 15 bucks on Amazon so what I'll generally do is all my holes in my designs are 4.6 millimeters so you can see that the little flange on the heat set actually goes into the hole and will kind of hold it in place there and what I like to do is I will hold my soldering iron here at an angle and we're just going to basically rest the soldering iron onto the heat set. It's going to um, absorb all that heat and then the heat set's going to naturally just start going in. And you don't have to really apply uh, much pressure. And you can see the heat set going in. And what I like to do is I like to leave, you know, a millimeter or so on the top and take my metal square and just run it over the top of the surface. This will align the heat set perfectly to your printed part. And this way you always, always, always get a nice flat pressed in heat cert. No extra tools required. You can see how flat that is. Really, really nice um, installation there. I'll do one more just to demonstrate. Um, I, I've, I've used this method for doing every heat cert I've ever done. I've built LDO kits and things like that that come with like a heat set insert tool thing. I've never used them. I've just personally never liked them. And I've always done it this way and I've always had um, excellent results with no weird angles on my heat sets or anything like that. So just heat it up till it's sticking out just a little bit. The heat set's gonna be still very hot so it can be pressed in on its own. And you're gonna just rub across it 
and you will get a perfectly aligned heat set there every time. So that's how I do my heat sets. Um, just a tip for you guys. Another little tip that I've used on building my Rook 3D printer and a couple other printers, I'm just gonna use this um, Galileo part as an example. It's not a great example, but it's the best way I can show it. But if you have a really tight part, let's say you have a, a heat set that's going in here and there's a bunch of plastic right here and you cannot get your soldering iron in there, what I like to do sometimes is I will put an M3 bolt in the other side and I will thread a heat set onto the bolt first. This will help align your heat set starting point. So this will take a little bit longer to heat up, but you can now control the angle of your heat set and it's also gonna hold the heat set in place. Like I say, this part is not a good example of this. This really works well for a tight radius where there's like a corner right here and you can't get a heat set in there flush or you can't start the heat set like it's not fitting into the hole correctly. This is a great way to get your heat set in there. Press it in and then like I say, if you have a small tool like this, you can sometimes even get it in uh, like this to press that heat set down nice and flat, right? I've sometimes even used this side. I'll run this across the top of it. And basically that flat surface is going to align that heat set perfectly every time. So leave some comments below if you have any questions or anything like that. I just wanted to kind of show this off because I know there's some people that are new to doing heat sets and this is the way I've done them and this is the way I prefer to do them. So um, thanks everyone for watching this quick little tutorial video. I am going to be doing a uh, more videos on Delta Flyer and Min, my Delta 3D printers, so definitely check those out. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, everybody.